if you read the history books of the Old Testament, you come across the Assyrians, and they are often portrayed as a very cruel and ruthless people. Ultimately, they were responsible for exiling the northern kingdom of Israel. They captured the kingdom of Israel and its capital Samaria in 721 BC. The Assyrian Empire continued for a number of years, eventually falling in 612 BC. The power that emerged in the vacuum was that of the Babylonians. The most famous Babylonian king was Nebuchadnezzar. It was Nebuchadnezzar who in 586 BC sent his army to Jerusalem, capturing Jerusalem and destroying the temple. Nebuchadnezzar died in 562 BC and was succeeded by a number of short-lived successors. Eventually, the Persians captured the Babylonian kingdom under their king Cyrus in 539 BC. One year later, Cyrus authorized the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple, which they started in 535 BC. The Persians ruled the Middle East until Alexander the Great came along. He destroyed the power of Persia with his lightning attack on the Persian Empire. In a 13-year campaign, Alexander went to Egypt, went as far as Samarkand in what is now uh, modern Uzbekistan, down the Indus Valley of Pakistan. He fell um, victim to an illness, perhaps malaria, in Babylon um, when he was only 32 years of age. So after Alexander's death, the rival generals fought for supremacy. There was no ultimate uh, winner. Eventually, uh, three or four kingdoms emerged. From the Bible's point of view, two are significant. The kingdom of Egypt under the Ptolemies, that the book of Daniel calls the king of the south, and the kingdom of, Seleuc of the Seleucids in Syria, that the book of Daniel calls the king of the north. These two kingdoms uh, contested control over the beautiful land, Daniel's term for the holy land, and power was transferred from the Ptolemies of Egypt to the Seleucids of Syria by the uh, Seleucid king Antiochus III. His successor, Antiochus IV, sometimes called Antiochus Epiphanes, is a particular focus of Daniel's prophecies. Antiochus Epiphanes forced the Jews to eat pork and prohibiting, prohibited them from circumcising their baby boys. He forbade temple worship and ordered that all copies of the Torah should be destroyed. In 539, Cyrus, king of Persia, conquered Babylon. The next year, 538 BC, he issued a decree that uh, those Jews who wanted to could return to Jerusalem. In 536, they started rebuilding the temple uh, with the blessing of Cyrus. However, there was opposition and the um, work on the temple was um, stopped for 16 years. Another king, Darius, came to the Persian throne and through the Lord's prophets, um, Zechariah and Haggai, the Lord urged God's people to start rebuilding the temple. This was completed in 516 BC. So Antiochus imposed his authority over the Jews for three and a half years. But eventually a revolt broke out led by um, the Maccabee family. Eventually, they were able to throw off Antiochus's yoke and declare a measure of independence. They were able to cleanse the temple and reinstitute temple sacrifice. The land that we now call Israel came under Roman control in 63 BC when the Roman general Pompey invaded it. 
he imposed a, a number of client kings, the most famous of which, of course, is Herod.